Why do Appalachians hate J.D. Vance? What a great topic to talk about. <laughs> As always, it's me, Jules, that Appalachian bitch that tells you Yankee motherfuckers about Appalachia. So J.D. Vance is what we in Appalachia would call a carpetbagger. If you don't know what a carpetbagger is, it's basically someone who profits off of specifically the South. The term came around after the Civil War when Northerners were moving into the South post-Civil War to benefit from Reconstruction also a term specifically for a politician who is seeking election and trying to pander to an area that they are not from. And it happens a lot in the South and in Appalachia. And J.D. Vance is a carpetbagger. He wrote a book called Hillbilly Elegy, and if you're from Appalachia, a, a cold rush just went down your spine. Don't worry, we only have negative things to say about it on this channel. Hillbilly Elegy was a memoir, supposedly, about his life. But in it, it was rife with all of these really negative um, stereotypes and misconceptions about Appalachian people. It implied that Appalachian people were lazy, that they were dirty, that the opioid epidemic happened in their area due to their own mistakes, that they didn't know how to pull themselves up from their bootstraps, and so they were going to be consistently stuck in these cycles because they didn't want to help themselves. And it's something that a lot of northern yankees as i refer to them um on my account basically like northern educated typically liberal people absolutely ate, mm, ate the fuck up i've said it before on this account i'll say it again northern ass liberal people love to have any form of negative stereotype about the south because it makes them feel better about themselves so they loved hillbilly elegy was essentially a form of poverty porn, which is something that happens in Appalachia all the time. It's where reporters or photojournalists or what have you will go into really deep rural parts of Appalachia and photograph these people or interview these people and, and uh, profit off of talking to these really poor people, whether it's photographing them in their very poor homes or what have you, even though they're not from there. And it also doesn't help the people in Appalachia because they're not seeing any of that money. And that's essentially what Hillbilly Elegy did was adapted into a Netflix movie, I believe, um, that was terrible. But J.D. Vance is talking about a region that he's not even fucking from. Home Homeboy is from fucking Ohio. And it's something I've tried to explain before on this channel, but the Appalachian Mountains and, like, their presence do not, does not necessarily equate yourself to the Appalachian recent region. So while you may be in Ohio and you may have the Appalachian Mountains, that doesn't make you Appalachian. And it's also important to note that he wasn't Appalachian anyways, he was in the fucking suburbs of Ohio. But his family was from Kentucky. He used that connection to fucking milk the shit out of this idea that he was Appalachian and to milk this poverty porn. In this state press article about the book, it says the book blames, or depending on how you read it, thanks the region for electing President Donald Trump, but does so without breaking down voter suppression in the region and the lack of broadband internet for researching candidates. Instead, Vance leans on the out-of-touch title the region has garnered. And like I said earlier, he's not even from Appalachia. Even Kentucky, where he's from... Did I have a stroke? Even Kentucky, where his family is from, he only ever spent summers there. And it was never for very long periods of time. So he was writing about these times that he was spending with his grandparents, claiming he was getting the full Appalachian experience, and writing all these things about these people that weren't even true, and profiting off of it. And mind you, I'm someone who, though is Appalachian through birth, I did not grow up in Appalachia. I grew up all over, but I did spend summers in Appalachia the same way he kind of did for longer periods of time. And I actually like it there. So, and I actually like respect the people and the culture. But anyways, as someone who has like a similar, I guess like a similar experience to a degree, although I wouldn't make that argument really at all, it would not have been enough for him to understand, he would not have been in Kentucky enough for him to understand Appalachian culture and to be able to understand the inner workings of the South. Because unless you're like really, really deep in Appalachia and really, really from there, or at least know people who are really, really from there and have connections to people who are really, really from there, you wouldn't really know. Because that area is so secluded and so remote, I guess, to a degree, that he's basically pulling everything out of his ass. In that same article, they say Vance uses a disenfranchised arguments to say that hillbillies need an elegy in the first place, that they need mourning or reflection for themselves and their lack of what he sees as opportunities to thrive. His memoir bashes the entire region with shocking ease and gives a false impression of what the people of Appalachia are really like. The book reaffirms negative stereotypes for anyone who might not be familiar, and that's really dangerous. It stings knowing that someone I might sit next to in the fall would ask me where I'm from on the first day. This author is from Kentucky, and she was talking about how when she was she how she 
how she moved to a, a, a liberal school and, and how she was afraid of the way people would react when she said that she was from Kentucky, just like for context. She says, uh, I might sit next to, sorry, it stings knowing that I might sit next to someone in the fall and they would ask me where I'm from on the first day and they won't get to know me because they think they already know. She goes on to say, people love to talk about Appalachia, but they often aren't willing to listen. Ooh! Hollywood and mainstream media continue to hyperfixate on one piece of the South and on Appalachia, trying to tell the stories of offbeat people or sometimes the systemic, the systematic struggles they face. Another review of the book, they wrote, Elegy is a little uh, more than a list of myths about welfare queens repackaged as a primer on the white working class. Vance's central argument is that hillbillies themselves are to blame for their troubles. This is a quote from his book. We spend our way to the poor house. Vance writes in the book, we buy giant TVs and iPads. Our children wear nice clothes thanks to high interest credit cards and payday loans. We purchase homes we don't need, refinance them for more spending money and declare bankruptcy, often leaving them full of garbage in our wake. Thrift is inimicable to our being, which I don't know if... <laughs> Any of y'all are Appalachian or have been to Appalachia, but them motherfuckers are thrifty as fuck. In a review of the adaptation of the film from the book, uh, Vulture writer Sarah Jones wrote, The book is poverty porn, wrapped in a right-wing message about the cultural pathologies of the region. In Vance's Appalachia, poverty and immorality intertwine. Success happens to hardworking people, and structural explanations for poverty receive glancing at sorry, receive glancing attention when he chooses to mention them at all. So much of what I have talked about on this account has been the misconceptions about Appalachia and has been about how the government has systemically kept the South and Appalachia as a part of that down. Appalachia is made of really hardworking people that are being consistently oppressed by the government. And it has always been that way. The South has been that way for, you know, since kind of the foundation of the country, but it's always been that way. And they are consistently ignored and, and left behind. It drives me up the fucking wall to, to make TikToks where I say, you know, the South deserves to be helped. Like we, the South deserves for, for people to come in and to help it and to have liberal Yankee ass motherfuckers look at me and say, well, no, they don't because they voted for Trump. And actually that's kind of what, which is why it's crazy to me that J.D. Vance is Trump's running mate because he actually accredits the whole reason that Trump became president to Appalachia and to the South when, mind you, voter suppression is incredibly prominent in Appalachia and the South and it, because it's so incredibly rural, voting has always been something that's hard. I've made whole videos about how the reason Republicanism runs rampant in the South is because one, it's so incredibly hard to vote. Two, it's so incredibly hard to educate yourselves on the types of candidates you have. And three, Democrats have consistently abandoned it. And when Republicanism is all that's pandering to the South, where do you think people are going to go? J.D. Vance's take that the fact that Appalachia is poor is only because of their own doing is untrue. And not only is it untrue, it's harmful. It completely ignores all the ways that the government not only keeps the region down, but keeps people down in general. And when you remember that the southern region of Appalachia specifically is mainly, and I shouldn't say mainly, but you remember that the South has the highest rate of people of color? You understand why the South is the way it is. They are trying to keep the South oppressed and they actively try to keep Appalachia oppressed. So J.D. Vance is someone who Appalachia does not like. Um, and that's like not even getting into his like shitty politics that I absolutely could. I'm, I've gotten a minute and a half. Hold on. While I was pulling some of his uh, political takes and stuff, I came across this from Politico where he writes in his memoir, quote, there is a lack of agency here in Middleton. As I was pulling his political stuff, I found this also, where he writes, there is a lack of agency here, talking about Appalachia, a feeling that you have little control over your life and a willingness to blame everyone but yourself. Again, assuming Appalachians are not taking accountability for if they're the ones keeping themselves impoverished, but reminder, they're not. But from a political side, clearly he's, he says, quote, I gotta be honest with you, I don't really care what happens to Ukraine one way or another. Politically, he's not the best. He's also implied that the Biden administration is allowing fentanyl to cross the border as a part of a deliberate strategy to kill Republicans. <laughs> he's also incredibly anti-union, which is insane because Appalachia is very pro-union. I can talk about this motherfucker for a while, so don't get me started on another video. <laughs>